my time on the reef is always bittersweet. It's hands down one of the most incredible experiences snorkeling above the coral gardens as turtles come up to you for a scratch. The colours and the diversity of life there are just mesmerising. It's hard to fathom that most of it will be lost in the coming decades as climate change takes a hold. The voices of marine and climate experts ring in my ear, interrupting the tranquility, constantly reminding me that 80% of the world's coral reefs could disappear. Yeah, it's bittersweet. Nicholas, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. We've invited you here today to talk a little bit about your research and the biodiversity crisis more broadly. Can you just introduce us to the idea of the biodiversity crisis? What exactly is it? Uh, well, the biodiversity crisis is the term we use to describe the overall loss of animals and plants on Earth, both in the abundance of individuals as well as the extinction of entire species. And my understanding is that your work resides in looking at the effects of UV radiation in frogs. Why don't you tell us about it? Well, I'm looking at the effects of elevated UVB radiation on amphibian physiology and immune function. You might remember the ozone hole that started forming in the 1970s due to the release of ozone-depleting substances by humans. Well, unfortunately, ozone is an excellent absorber of UVB radiation. So with reductions in the concentration of ozone, came increases in the amount of UVB radiation reaching the Earth's surface. At the same time that this was happening, we also observed outbreaks of disease in frogs across the planet, and often in relatively pristine montane regions where UVB radiation tends to be quite high. The chytrid fungus is responsible for the worst epidemic of any vertebrate in recorded history, and is thought to be responsible for the extinction of at least 200 species of amphibians. But we still don't know why this pathogen became so deadly. One hypothesis that has long been proposed is that increases in UVB radiation might be responsible. Could it be that elevated UVB radiation is affecting the immune system of frogs, making them more susceptible to diseases such as the chytrid fungus? So what are you working on in your PhD to help us answer this question? Well, levels are extremely varied across sites and are dependent on a wide range of environmental factors, including cloud cover, altitude, and dissolved organic carbon concentrations of the water where tadpoles live. I can remove all of that complexity with a controlled laboratory experiment, where I have different intensities and doses of UVB radiation generated by fluorescent lights. I can examine the effects on growth and development, and I can raise these tadpoles through to metamorphosis to see if there are any effects of UVB radiation on disease susceptibility later in life. That sounds great, but do you ever get the question, so what? Does it really matter? They're just frogs after all. These days, people are getting more and more disconnected from nature. But David Attenborough said it best. We should admire nature because we are a part of it and we depend on it. The food we eat, the water we drink, and the medicines that we develop all depend on healthy ecosystem function. Oftentimes, people forget to appreciate that sensitive ecosystems can be altered by the removal of even a single species. Frogs, for example, are a crucial part of the food web and are necessary for stabilising many ecosystems globally. They also control disease vectors such as mosquitoes and help reduce disease epidemics in people. The more biota we lose, the greater the impacts on human well-being will be. So what do we do? Is it all too late? We have two options continue with the way things are, or do everything in our power to curb the effects of climate change and our impacts on the environment. And it is simply crucial that we do the latter. If we don't continue to take serious action right now, the impacts on human well-being will be devastating.
we all have the ability to make a difference in the hope of leaving the earth in a better state for future generations.